Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Hairstylist Inner Circle. Wednesday is my day to pop in here and add some value in education for all of you. So in this morning's coffee chat, I got into some good stuff on glazing, and I thought that I would pick up where I left off and go a little deeper in glazing. It seems to be, to me, the number one question that I see on all of the forums is, what do I use for this? <clears throat> what do I use to glaze for this? What do I use to glaze for that? And all of the both questions and answers are cryptic and vague. You know, the question is, they'll put up a photograph of a beautiful Pinterest worthy Naha, um, not Naha, Naha is more avant-garde, but more like a behind the chair one shot photo. You know, it's that typical hands in the back of the hair with it all separated and curled and this beautiful dimension. And there's a lot going on in the photograph and they will put that photo up and say, my client's coming tomorrow. This is the picture. What do I use? And I cringe every time I see it because number one, that model in that photo came from a different starting point than your guest in your chair. So especially post Corona, COVID, whatever you want to call it, we've all been out of work for a long time and God only knows what our clients have been doing to their hair. There's a lot of using of the temporary sprays which can build up on the hair. There's people who are in sunny weather and have pools and have been swimming a lot and may have a lot of chlorine buildup. There's people who have been stuck somewhere they went on vacation and they couldn't get back and they may have different water there than they do at home. I mean, there's so many variables. And if you had them on a regimen with Malibu treatments and you're constantly getting in there and prepping the hair and keeping it in pristine condition, they've already missed two visits with you and you don't know what's coming back to you in your chair. But I just wanted to, to go a little deeper on glazing on the why. When you're picking up your glaze, why are you choosing a liquid? Why are you choosing a cream? What is the difference between the two? Do you know that there is a difference between the two? There is a big difference between Redken Shades EQ liquid and Redken Shades EQ cream. There's a big difference between, you know, Sebastian Cellophane's and Jazzing and Redken Shades EQ or Paul Mitchell PM Shines. There's a big difference between, you know, a quick five minute Kenra flash toner and a Redken Shades EQ 20 minute toner. There's Wella permanent toners that use 20 volume developer that also will shift the base. Do you know that? Do you know everything about the product that you are putting on people's hair every single day? Probably not, because there's things that I'm still learning after 33 years of doing hair color, I'm having light bulb moments every day. I haven't worked with the M series yet in Shades EQ. So when an M comes along, Old School Elaine says, oh, mocha. They're coming out with a mocha shade. How wonderful. It's going to be light chocolate, milk chocolate, dark chocolate. No, it's M for matte. What do you think of when you hear the word matte? Think about lipstick. This is matte. There's no shine. There's no gloss. It's matte. That's what I think of when I hear the word matte. That is not why Redken named that series matte. I swear red can messes with us on purpose. Who creates a 9AA that's bright bozo orange? AA in any other world is double ash, right? So we all think when we see two A's, yes, it's going to be knocking out all the breasts. It's double ash. Woo, big guns of ash. You use a 9AA in shades, you're going to get a very unpleasant surprise when you see that it's all burn, all burn. Who named these shades? We will never know. It's something that I always Google and try to find out who creates the names of the shades. I'm still scratching my head on the 9AA because even in their permanent line, they don't use AA for Auburn in any other way, only the Shades EQ. So Laura just said, I'm very excited for the M. I love Shades EQ Cream Cover Plus. So 
Cream Cover Plus that Laura is referring to is not something that you're going to glaze hair with. You can, you 100% can. I don't recommend it. Cover Cream Plus is a very opaque, very heavy coverage for a demi. It's more like um, Wella Color Touch. Redken's Cream Shades EQ is the equivalent of Wella Color Touch as it's a cream and it's a demi and it's opaque and it's alkaline. The difference between a cream demi and a liquid demi is cream is alkaline, liquid is acidic. That makes a big difference in the end result. When I use a demi, which I only low light with demi, I have never low lighted hair with permanent color. That's a personal preference. I don't believe that you need ammonia and all of that strength and lift when you're going through pale blonde hair and you wanna add some depth in there that you see in my hair. In order to add this depth, all you're looking for is deposit. You're not looking for any lift when you're putting darker pieces in. So if you use permanent color, not only is it going to create a little bit more damage than it needs to because it's stronger than a demi, but you're also going to be lifting and depositing. So when a demi, well, I'm sorry, when a permanent colored low light starts to hit the sun and the elements and the heat of the blow dryer, you're going to get that wonky, weird low light that fades out to that weird brassy shade because it went in and lifted. It exposed that remaining pigment contribution under the surface. So there's really never a need to use permanent color as a low light. The only thing permanent about permanent color, I'm going to say this slowly because this is going to be like, whoa, what? This is like an aha light bulb moment. And if it's not, you're not really getting it. So people say permanent and demi-permanent. Oh, permanent lasts so much longer than demi. It's not true. The only thing permanent about permanent color is the lift that it creates. And the lift that it creates is what exposes the warmth. So if you're struggling with brassiness, I can promise you it's because you're using permanent color when you should have been using demi-permanent because the difference between a demi and a permanent is its ability to lift. The demi does not lift. An alkaline demi can shift maybe half of a level, so you need to be aware of that and not go too high on your demi developer. But for the most part, when you're looking for that sheer shiny glaze that you're seeing all over Pinterest and all over um, social media, you want the light to be able to peek through. You want an acidic, shiny sheerness to your finish. That is acidic liquid color, shiny sheer, shiny sheer. When Redken Shades EQ came out 25 years ago, they just celebrated a birthday last year. So it's, I think they were going on 26 years old. Their tagline was the color so shiny and so conditioning that it thinks it's a conditioner. And it was a very clever marketing um, way to go about it that really got my attention because how many times have you highlighted somebody and the color is beautiful, but you just want that little bit of extra zhuzh of a color of a sparkle. So say you highlight somebody and it's like the front piece of my hair. It's just like really super pale blonde. Okay, fine. Raw, left undone. And you're like, I just want to like beige it up or honey it up or put a little bit of a 14 karat gold something for shine. Before Shades EQ came along, we had fillers, which were in like a glass bottle and we used them to fill the hair when we were doing a tint back. And we had permanent color. We did not have this category of this demi permanent. So I'm really showing my age here. So for the first eight years of my career, I had permanent color and, I, and the only toners that were available were the Wellness T series that you see floating around too in different forums, T18, T21. They're super drab um, toners that are meant to be used on double process blonding and they're mixed with 20 volume. So they're intense and they're really strong because they act like permanent color. So that was the only toners that we had. We didn't have any of these things. So now that we do, I think people are just grabbing 
bottles of whatever they heard on a YouTube video or an Instagram post that sounded like a great idea. And they're throwing it on, you know, soaking wet hair at the bowl, leaving it on for five minutes and rinsing it out. If you're putting a glaze on for five minutes, you're really not going to get a lot of longevity or even a lot of effects because it really didn't have a chance to do much because picture if you're putting it on top of wet hair, there's a barrier on the hair already, and then you're only giving it five minutes to do its job. So Redken Shades EQ in all of their um, charts and instructions and brochures, they always say dry hair 20 minutes. And every person who, I shouldn't say ever, I hate when I do that. Most people who use it are putting it on soaking wet hair at the ball for five to eight minutes. It's not gonna hurt anything by doing that, but you're spending a lot of money on product that's expensive to just simply temporarily add a little bit of tone to the hair. It's not going to last when you do it that way. Um, so understanding the why behind what you're choosing and when to use which. Now my favorite, favorite, I'm gonna share some favorites with you. My favorite low light is Wella Color Touch. It is a cream demi. If I want a cool, like what I have going through my hair, where's that piece that I just had? So you want it to be cool and blend in with a cool blonde, but you don't want it to be like somebody took a Sharpie and ran it through the hair. See how it's just like that sandy, but it's very cool in tone. It's not orangey. So for that look on a really pale blonde, my absolute favorite is eight stroke seven one in Wella Color Touch. Now here I am sharing formulas, but I'm telling you that I use it on a pale blonde that has gotten too blonde, which if she's in my chair, she didn't get too blonde. The only time I have to do it is when I'm correcting somebody else's mess. I don't over highlight. So I, don't, I rarely have to low light because when I'm highlighting, I step away from the head and I see where does she need lightness? Now I'm really overdue because of this Corona situation. So when you look at me, you can see, like when you highlight, I want you to pretend that you have, of course I have 87 markers any other time. So imagine this is your highlight brush and this is where you're putting your highlights in. So when you're highlighting, I want you to get out of that weave, 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 foil, Chewing the gum, next, 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 next hair, next hair, next hair, skip a spot, next hair, next hair. There's no intention. It's just kind of like a free for all. You're just like loading the head up with blonde pieces. And then you're constantly on the next visit saying, oh, time for your low lights because I made you too blonde. It's really silly when you think about it that way, but you're probably doing it because most people are. So when I'm highlighting, I look at the person when they're sitting in the waiting area, when I go to greet them. I look at them from across the room. Like when I look at myself from far away, I say, oh, okay, right here is a little weird and peachy. This didn't get light enough. And that was my fault. That was me being impatient, doing some bathroom balayage during this pandemic. So I have these two weird <laughs> camera, two weird peachy pieces that I don't love that I need to glaze out. But if you were to look at me in your chair, rather than do foil, 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 you can see very clearly where these foils need to be reconnected. So foil, 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 three versus poof, 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 every, 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 every. Because then what's happening is even if you're weaving, so your weaves are like open fingers, you're doing that and you're leaving a little bit of hair, but the closer together they get, the more it becomes more like a slice and it's more like a layer of blonde sitting on the surface and you're going to get too much blonde concentrated together. It's going to get really blonde. So if you have your blondes where there's, they started out as a 12 week highlight, then they became a 10 week highlight. Then they became an eight week highlight. Now you're starting to see them asking to come in in six weeks you did that. That is on you, not them. They didn't decide, oh, I want to go spend another $200 much more frequently. You created so much of a concentration of a buildup of blonde because you applied it in a robot manner of next, 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 next. And you put no thought and no intention 
into your placement, you create it what's now become, you know, a situation where they become a blondorexic, where they're like, oh my gosh, I need highlights in like two weeks now, because there's so much solidness that the minute their regrowth grows in, it's instantly a black line down the center of their head because you create it too much of a population of blonde. So in my membership, Hair Color Secrets Insider, I go into highlight placement, making your life easier, working smarter, not harder. Most of my clients, even the big corrective massive heads, I'm able to foil in an hour or less because I put the foils exactly where I need them and not where I don't. I don't want to create so much so much highlight and so much um, mass blonding that then I have to keep going in and low lighting because a highlight low light is never going to be as pretty as a highlight with intention with their natural color being their highlight. You're never going to have a client, like when you see that in my hair, I'm never going to get brassy in the sun when that natural hair became my low light, the way that an artificial low light is going to fade out. And that's why I really like Well A Color Touch for my low lights because it's one of the few products that I can pick up a hair. If I do a client, I do that 871 formula on a blonde. When she comes back to see me in 12 weeks, because that's when my blondes come to see me because I do it with purpose and intention. I can go through her hair and pick up the exact piece of 871 and it still looks exactly like the day that I put it in there. No wonky warmth, no fading, no weirdness because it did what it was supposed to do. It was a demi. It was supposed to put color in. It didn't try to lift and take color out. It simply put back color in where it was missing. So what is 871? And why am I telling you what's 871? When you heard me say that, you probably grabbed a pen and wrote down, well, color touch 871. I need to buy that and I need to use it on everyone. No, you need to use it when it's needed. So what is 871? In Wella, the first number is the level. So it's level eight, stroke separates it. It's a little stroke mark. And then seven one, it's 70% of seven, seven in Wella means brown, and one is ash. So it's 70% brown with 30% ash. So I'm safe because I have 70% brown and I'm going in on that pale hair. The pale hair has been lifted beyond all of the warmth that comes naturally in hair. So if I start out on an, an eight, nine, or 10, when I'm putting that eight, seven, one in, I'm missing all the yellow and gold and all the tone that needs to be in hair to not go muddy. So the seven is brown and it's safe. It has all of the tones in it to be able to go in and not be muddy, but I don't want it to be warm brown. So then the 30% of the cool is in there, keeping it really believable and beautiful and a little on the cool side, but it never goes muddy. So for low lights, I either do 671, 771, or 871. They're my go-to when I want a cool result. If I want a warmer result, say I want like more of a caramely shade, something a little bit on the warmer side, but I want it to be believable and still natural looking, same line, well, a color touch, um, alkaline demi cream color. I will do 773 or 673, 773 or 873. Same thing. It's the level with brown and then the three is gold. So it's brown gold, level six, level seven, level eight. If I want chocolate brown, if I want that really rich chocolate, I love their seven sevens. So stroke seven seven is brown brown, beautiful chocolate. So four seven seven, five seven seven, the deeper levels, I am obsessed with their seven seven. So that's an explanation of like, you hear me talk about Shades EQ all the time. You rarely hear me talk about, well, a color touch as a low light because I rarely low light. But when I do, those are amazing formulas that really perform well in all those situations. Um, let me see what questions we have. Laura, have you used the M series or you haven't gotten, I haven't gotten my hands on it yet because it came out during this whole 
mess. So I haven't gotten to the beauty supply, but I want to do an updated um, Glazy Crazy class where I swatch out the VBs. The 10 series is brand new since I did my swatching class. So here is the results of my Let's Go Glazy Crazy, and it's in the membership. So if you guys want to check it out and get the the $97 Glazy Crazy class is in the membership. So you get it included with your membership. So all of these swatches were done on different bases. This is where this started out. And then these are all the colors that I did with it. And you see that every single result is super flat and ashy and boring. And there was a decent amount of warmth in that swatch. So a lot of... Um, a lot of the Shades EQ cool colors right now are really, really cool, like beyond the cool that we ever had before. So the VBs are, I believe, the, the coolest line right now. Um, there's VBs, there's NAs, there's Ps, there's Ts. There's so many different um, cool shades but you have to be careful because sometimes when they're used alone, you're going to get that murky, muddy, weird color that's not found in nature because they're meant to be that cool to fight all of the gold and brassy and blorange that this is what's so crazy about hair color. So Redken makes permanent hair color and they train their instructors to teach you a certain way of formulating, which in my opinion, is not a good way to formulate and it creates a lot of brassiness. So we're following their instructions using their color to create a lot of brassiness. And then we scream and yell and say, oh my gosh, I have so much orange, I have so much brassiness. Where can I work? How can I glaze away all of this warmth? And then Redkin says, we're here to help you. We're creating a VB and an NA because we want you to be able to cool off all that brassiness. But if they would just teach you how to properly formulate and let you understand that it's not possible to glaze away all that orange, it's better to not create it in the first place. That's where my head just is ready to snap off. I just can't even wrap myself around it. Why they don't just simply teach differently where formulation, the power is in the tube of the color, not the developer. So everybody's running around using 30 and 40 volume in their formulation creating all this brass and then reaching out to Redken saying, we need cooler, we need cooler, we need cooler, make it as cool as possible. And then everybody's using these cool shades and then everybody's walking around with this muddy, you know, super ashy, not pretty color because it was too cool. Um, Laura said, I agree. Definitely found a trick to help keep the orange down. Yes. Um, there's certain things that are simply not possible because of the universal law of left and because of exposed contributing pigment. So if you don't, it, I mean, it literally took me 25 years of my career of frustration trying to make a level five client into an eight with no warmth. I spent 25 years running to class after class, course after course, you know, traveling abroad, going everywhere, trying to find the perfect answer to a cool level eight result only to really find out finally after all those years that level eight in nature is a super gold warm place to be so while we're striving to get our person to a level eight we're actually striving for orange and gold and not even realizing we're doing it because we're thinking of the finished result of a glazed down, bleached and toned eight versus an eight coming out of the hair naturally, if that makes sense. So there's a big difference between someone who starts out with a level seven and lightens their hair to an eight and someone who starts at a three, four, five and lightens to an eight. So there's so many factors and I guarantee most people watching this right now, or if you're watching this on the replay, you're probably like, oh crap, I really didn't think about all that. I just know that on Sandy, you know, 8N and 8B was a great mixture. So I'm going to use it on Julie and Marie and Trish and Tracy and all these other people because it worked on her. So 
really understanding why you do what you do and why you reach for what you reach for and what really truly happens when you glaze hair. In this entire day, when I did this class, the only respectable formula that I would actually put on my own hair and I do use on my own hair is this one here. And this one was done on really white hair. So it's, it's not even pretty. And it's the prettiest on hair that has a little bit of yellow left behind. 9RB, 9P, and clear all equal parts. But it was done on really white hair that has no yellow left in it on purpose to show like when you over lift and then you use your glazes, it's not going to be pretty because there's nothing for it to grab onto and it's all tone that's showing up. So this is a beautiful glaze on hair that's more like this starting out or more like this starting out. So the difference, you know, this, this was the deepest, this one here was the deepest swatch that I used. This was more like a true level eight with a lot of warmth. And look at how drab and blah all these are with the tones by themselves. The P, the T, just an 8N by itself. Look how drab that is. It's not a pretty color and it's an N. And then the NA is even more drab. This all looks like mouse fur to me. And those are glazes that you're reaching for and using all of the time, not understanding Sometimes you need to add warmth into your formula and sometimes you need to pre-tone and then tone with the desired shade that you want the finished result to be. So for example, if I wanted, um, I'm a bad example. If, if I was super yellow, which on this camera, I'm really looking ashy today. So I'm really not a good example. But if a client wanted strawberry blonde or a rose gold, Sometimes strawberry is the hardest color to achieve because red does not naturally live at a level nine. And strawberry is usually like an eight and a half, not eight and a half to nine and a half um, range in the hair, that beautiful pale strawberry that is so rarely seen and done well because it's not, hair doesn't naturally have warmth at that level. So if someone is lightened up to yellow, and they want that strawberry color and you pick a shade that's supposed to be a beautiful rosy strawberry, it most likely has a pink background to it, like a pinky champagne. And you're putting that pink onto yellow hair. So pink on yellow is going to create peach. And then you're going to create this peach head and be like, why is it peach? I wanted it to be more pinky strawberry. You need it to remove or neutralize the yellow first for it to be able to accept the pink on its own. So that's a case where you want to pre-glaze or pre-tone or even do like um, Fanola shampoo to get rid of some of the yellow before you put the pink tone on top. So there's so much more to glazing than we are giving um, our attention to. And I think that it can really change your game behind the chair when you really, really understand the why of what you're doing, of, you know, really mapping it out and thinking. Um, one of the lessons that I'm working on now for the insider members is the um, Corona casualty that I just had. My husband's cousin, the daughter did her own hair. It was like, I shared the picture in here. And if you did the Sunday experience, you got the video of how I corrected it. Most of the correction was using Malibu products and glazes. There was not a whole lot of highlighting. I think I did 45 foils total in the correction. And most of it was really understanding the why behind the glazes that I did. And I did a triple glaze on her. So that's where it gets interesting using the, the really gentle approach, like Shades EQ is so gentle. It's, you're never going to have a lot of damage in the hair. It's super gentle. And it really can be your number one best friend in a corrective situation because it really does exactly what it's supposed to do. There's, there's hardly ever a surprise unless there's major porosity issues. And that's a whole other class. You need to prep the hair and make sure it's healthy and can hold on to the color that you're putting in there. If you don't have a porosity equalizer in your arsenal, 
get one. It's a big game changer. It fills in all those pockets of hair that are so porous and damaged that it's going to grab really funky when you put a glaze on because it's so parched and in need of moisture. So a spray porosity equalizer, Kenra has a good one. Scruples has a good one. Um, not scruples. Um, oh my gosh. I'm picturing the bottle in my mind. It's like a purple bottle. I have some, but just Google porosity spray and find one that, you know, you can spray it onto the hair and just brush it through evenly before you put your glaze on. And you're going to notice a huge difference in your results. So it is the one year anniversary of my membership. Some of my members are on here. I see Laura, I see Deborah, um, I see Donna. Um, there's a bunch of people that are members of my insider group. It's a great group, awesome community. If you're on my email list, you're going to be getting emails. We're going to be working on sending those out today, just inviting you to open enrollment. You can join monthly for $49 a month, or you can get the great deal on all the bells and whistles and bonuses and join for the year. And you get the entire hair color simplified course, which is a 397 course in of itself in the annual. So for 497, you get a 397 course with a 497 course and two bonus courses if you do the annual. And I get it. We've been out of work. I know it's hard to just plop 497 on your credit card. But people have asked like, is there a payment plan? I'm like, yeah, the membership, the monthly membership is the payment plan. The monthly membership is 49 a month. The annual you pay all at once. So if you want to just have that 49 a month where all you have to do is give up a Starbucks here and there to pay for it, it's less than $2 a day to have a mentor and a path to success as a colorist. If you're stuck in the same income and you're doing the same things over and over again you've done since you started out because you just don't know how to do it any differently, this is the course for you. It's a membership. It's a journey from beginning to where you want to go. It's being coached and helped along the way with the, um, what's the word? The, the encouragement to raise your prices, the encouragement to do your timing differently behind the chair, doing a consultation differently, considering the eye color and the skin color when you're formulating. Is the person cool or warm? Um, doing a gray conversion. When somebody wants to grow their gray out and you're like, oh my gosh, I just want to send her down the street, taking a deep breath and introducing butterfly foils and making sure that you're not going over top of the gray with your lightener, which will then create yellow and create a whole other um, corrective mess. So it's me going through step-by-step step of what I've already learned from trial and error and giving you the cliff notes. It's kind of like the cliff notes of hair color all the best nuggets, none of the fluff, none of the time wasting, you get right into exactly what works and why, how to avoid brassiness, how to be a better glazer, tools that you probably have never heard of that are different. Um, I talked about on my coffee chat, this Sheila Stotts brush is my new obsession for melting and pulling glazes down a little bit at the root for root shadows and melts. I'm loving this. This is a special bonus gift for people who are signing up for the annual, it's a special limited edition gift that I only have a couple of these. So the first couple people that commit to the annual also get this sent to you in the mail and it's awesome. It's great for combing out teasing when you do teasy lights. It's great for just bringing the root shadow just down slightly through the hair. I've used the wow comb and I threw it across the room. It was getting stuck in the hair. I was getting lines where I stopped with the blending, it was a hot mess. I, I know people love the welcome. I'm not one of them. I bought two of them when I bought it because I thought we were all gonna be um, killing each other over um, using it in the salon. So I bought two and I, I hate them. Um, I don't know whose name this is, but someone's saying best, best brush. So thank you. I hope that uh, somebody will take advantage of having that as their bonus. And then Laura is a new member and I've known Laura forever. Laura worked for me way back in the day in the beginning of her career. And she's watched my coffee chats. We talk all the time directly through Instagram. We, you know, she's done private coaching calls with me and she finally bit the bullet and joined the membership and she's loving it. So I love that 
she finally did it and it took her a long time and I get it. Some of you have been watching me and listening to me go on and on about hair color for two years and you're still haven't taken the leap and that's okay. You know, the membership's here when you're ready. You may not be ready. Oh, Sarah, girlfriend, I have to get you in here talking about the membership. Are you decent today? <laughs> I couldn't bring you in the other day. I was trying to for from Facebook, but this is a uh, street Sarah is an amazing member. I got to meet her live at the retreat. We had a blast. She is completely open to information when she sees that we talk about the Facebook advertising promotion to get new clients in your chair. She does it. When we talk about Vish, she gets Vish. When we talk about the melting brush, she gets the melting brush. You know, it's one thing to be, uh, have things shared with you. And if you just listen and it goes in one ear and out the other, you're going to stay the same. You're not going to grow. You have to take the information and do something with it and trust it. She's glamorous today. Sarah, let me see. I'm going to see if I can invite you. Hold on. I'm going to put it right in the comments. Oh, of course, it's not letting me comment. I'm going to put it in a banner for you, Sarah. Hold on. See if I can get you on here live. All right, Sarah. So copy, if you can, copy and paste that and click on it. And I should be able to see you show up in my green room in the bottom of my screen. Give it a shot. Because I would love for you to share your experience with people that may be on the fence. There's nothing like having somebody who is already in it and already comfortable to share it rather than me trying to say it's wonderful because I think it's wonderful, but it doesn't matter what I think. Let's see if Sarah can come on. In the meantime, is there any other questions about what I'm rambling about with Shades EQ or the membership or anything else? Somebody shared that Kuhn has a beautiful porosity filler. Can't copy in. Oh. Sarah, let me see if I can find your email to email it to you. Hang on, I'm going to try something different. All right, Sarah, I just um, emailed it to you. So try clicking on it in your email. And I won't keep anybody. If, if we're not able to do it, it's okay. I'm over my time anyway. I'm supposed to keep these to 30 minutes and I always go over. And I actually have an interview with the one and only Ruth Roche today for the membership. So the other part of the membership is I'm always inviting guest artists. We have Beth Minardi, Joe Blackwell, Michael Cole. Um, who else? Wynn Claybaugh. I'm going to be having Ruth Roche. I just had Vivian McKinder recently um, interviewed. Who else do we have? Uh, John DeJulius, who wrote Secret Service. So it's not just hair color. The, folk, the primary focus is hair color, but it's not just hair color. There's business, branding, pricing, Instagram, um, profit and loss, you know. Oh, oh, here's Sarah. She's coming. She's coming. There I am. Now, I, I don't have sound. Yet. Hold on. Let me put my earbuds in. This, this. 
Look how pretty you are with no notice. I got ready today. I have somewhere to be actually. Well, I don't want to keep you. I just want you to do a little natural. Um, this is not planned guys, obviously, because it was a little stressful trying to figure out how to get her on here. Let me take this off. Where the heck is it? There we go. So Sarah is in California, which I'm so sorry what you are going through with this whole, I mean, you guys are like, we got the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm I mean, sure I keep saying New York could open before us. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's bad. And it's really scary because I think what's happened to in our world, so many people are not really defined properly from their income. Like, are they a sole proprietor? Are they an owner? Are they an employee? Are they 1099? Are they W-2? And there's all these people that are not qualifying for unemployment or any of these grants or anything because they have this weird pay structure that they might have thought they were winning in a, in a regular world that they weren't paying taxes. But now it's like, what are they supposed to do to feed their family? So it's it's just really scary. Yeah. So. California is scary with that right now, just because that's also been another issue. The whole right, right. nine thing, just our lease rates are high too on our business buildings. And they just changed everything, right? As far as like all the booth rent and all the rules. You either have to be booth rent. You cannot be 1099. You are like an independent business owner. So it's been a huge learning experience right now for a lot of people, what they truly are and have to be misclassified. Right. Because they're not qualifying for things they should be. Right. So they're kind of just left hanging and, oh, well, sorry. Like feast or famine right now. It's kind of sad. And what is the, the guesstimated date at this point? I'm in Orange County. So we have, our numbers have been low. So they're predicting possibly early June. Well, that's but good. I mean, I'll believe it when it happens. And Orange County is my dream to live and didn't happen because it is the most, other than San Francisco, I think it's the most expensive place you can live. So that's even yeah. scarier. You know what I mean? It's not like you can just say, oh, well, no worries. Yeah, LA, I know, is uh, they're predicting right now July 4th, which is, mm -hmm. that's almost six months of being closed for a business owner. Wow. Yeah, not good. Crazy, crazy. So how how do you feel as a member? You're one of the founding members. You're going into your second year. So if you can just give a little piece of advice of someone who may be like, you know, I'm out of work. I don't have the money to do this. Is we, we all have that story we keep telling ourselves, but then we don't get the education we need and then we don't make the money to then join down the road. So um, I've done hair probably 15 years. I'm an education addict. So I've taken, like Elaine has said, she's taken everyone. So I got tired of just pouring money out and it's, they're only giving you knowledge on that brand. You're only getting brand knowledge. They're not going to teach you how to break the rules, but do it the right way. So you're always kind of like, mm, this is happening. Like she was saying, you use shades of cute to bandit, how they're teaching you to formulate when it's not the proper way. So Elaine has given me great techniques, made me faster behind the chair, work smarter, not harder, build my ticket price up even higher than you can already get in California. Um, and just the group you get in the ciders group is even better, but it's, it's great. I mean, I learn something new every time I look forward to her teaching and she teaches relatable. It's not going to go over your head. So, I mean, anything I'm missing? Now, and, and what I always try to tell people too is, um, you know, I don't get into vivids or crazy. Like I think when people hear hair color, they're like, oh God, what if it's, you know, all this different stuff. I, I really focus on behind the chair, real things that you're going to come across. Like it's fun to do the vivids if that's your thing. But I always tell people, if you're into vivids and you want that, don't join because you're going to be highly disappointed because it's more, you know, beautiful, natural, dimensional blonding, great, really good gray coverage. I touch wood. I've been doing color for 33 years. I've never had gray that I couldn't cover. And that's something that I read every single day. People just I never keep, have an issue. <laughs> yeah. They keep changing color lines over and over and over. They're like, 
I, I need great, better gray colors. I need it. And I'm like, no, you need a the class formula. on formulating because you're not formulating. Yeah. The right application. I would say you teach stuff that's relatable to behind the chair. That's what's going to make you money. Right. Time and time again. We all know blondes, money. If you can nail someone's color, money. They'll stay with you forever. Yeah. And especially like utilizing demis differently. I think for me behind the chair, anytime a client couldn't get in with me and they needed to go to a different salon, not just a different person in my salon, but a different salon, they would come back with this shoe polish, black looking flat brunette hair with no dimension and be like, look at this. What did they do? And I'm like, what did they do? Like, you should have called me and said, I can't get in. I would have been happy to talk to that colorist and tell them what to use because now it's going to take me a year to get you back to your demi and not have that shoe polish creeping down your head as it grows out. So it's using color in a different way and making it special and more, um, I always refer to couture, couture color, couture highlights. It's special and dimensional. It's anybody can throw a five in on somebody's head and call it color. But in order to make it where the client is loyal to you and feels like coming to see you is an event. I mean, I think you'll agree, Sarah, our clients miss us more than any other business that they can't get to. I know for me, um, I feel like I, I want colors so bad. I want a haircut. I, okay. I want my nails. But yours looks great. Are you are you bathroom balayaging? Have you been touching um, it up? You know, I have some gray. So yeah, I might have snuck some foils in. I mean, looks good. We've got all the time in the world. Yeah, but even um, even doing it yourself, like I have this Wamper right here that's like undercooked. And I get annoyed every time I go live and I see it, I want to go back in, but I know I'm going to get excited and I'm going to do too big of a piece and then I'm going to have a big chunk. So even though we know how to do it, it's still not ideal to hold your arm up and try it's to work. do it yourself. Yeah. It's a lot of work. And I was going to say, you really opened my eyes up to the Demi world and really to step away from always grabbing permanent hair color and grabbing Demi. Yeah. I think that's huge. And I think it's huge in the um, avoiding the warmth. You know, that's the that's the key to the castle. Like if you're not using Demi at all in your salon, you're probably fighting a whole lot of brass because permanent color is always going to bring that your individual underlying. Yep. And I always tell my blondes and, you know, they all want base bump this. I said, if you don't want to be warm, step away. Yeah, ban the base bump. You could love my hair color, but I am a very warm blonde and I have to always remind them. That your color is pretty. I like your curls. Did you do those with the flat iron? No. Um, what did I use? The Babyliss one fourth. I literally, oh, I leave a huge chunk of the ends out. And when it's hot, I rake it quick so that they oh. fall out. my hair will grab curl quick. I'm always trying to look like that, but I look like I got caught in a blender. I haven't put any product in yet either. <laughs> It looks really pretty. Well, it's very California, very fitting for California. Yes. Well, thank you for being spontaneous and jumping on. on with you. Yeah, because people get so deer in the headlights when I ask for member testimonials. I'm like, guys, can you do like a quick one minute video? They either never send it to me because they, they never do it because they just keep crapping their pants every time they do it. And it just doesn't come across natural. You know what I mean? You talking to me right now with not with no notice is always going to come across more authentic than if you're sitting there trying to rehearse something to say into your phone. And it's just, it's just the way it is. People get really, it's like oh. Jan, Jan Brady from the Brady Bunch when she was on that show. And she I'm not a big video <laughs> person, but I'm warming up to it because that's kind of what our industry is. They want to see you pop in and say hi. Yeah. And have you checked in with your clients? Have you done the virtual consultations? Not virtual. I've been chatting with a lot of them and it's not that they just miss getting their hair done. They miss you, the experience, everything about the normalcy that goes with getting your hair done. So Absolutely. Anytime they accidentally think the news says we're open, my phone blows up and I'm like, no, 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 no. There's no green line yet. Green light. So it's, it's hard. They really, and they feel for you as an owner. Yeah. Try the virtual because they're really the, the, Bryn has the girls all doing the virtual and people really, well, number one, our clientele are not techie. So for them, it may be the first FaceTime they've ever done. So they feel so cool that they could hold their phone and see their hairdresser. 
Um, so there's that. And then they're like, wow, they actually like thought of me when they haven't seen me. They feel like they're really valued and they're not just a name on an appointment book. So I think the relationships going forth, like once they do get back into the salon, I think there's going to be a new connection that wouldn't have been there if we simply sent them an email, just a stock email or a quick voicemail because nobody ever answers their phone. Mm -hmm. um, so we had them schedule the consultation. So it was like a date, you know, oh, and they did it face to face and they really, we've gotten so much great feedback. So I recommend it's a lot of like personalized texting, people checking back and forth. How can we support you? Um, I mean, I always, I keep saying, where's our industry going now? I feel like it's forever changed and it's going to be about not just you, it's the experience anymore. And it's always been the experience, but it's going to get more on that level. Absolutely. Have you read John DeJulius's book, Secret Service? No, I need I highly recommend it. He's an interview in the membership. I interviewed him and he talks about something, an acronym FORD, F-O-R-D. And he says, F is for this, O is for this. Like he's very into customer service. He trains Ritz Carlton Four Seasons, all the high level hotels and restaurants bring him in for keynotes. And he has all these great ideas for like the smallest thing that you can do differently. One of the things that he does is say your entire salon has black capes. There's a, a handful of white capes and you put that on a brand new guest. So every person in the salon knows that that's a new guest. So they can, you know, be extra welcoming and point cute. out where the restroom is and be on their best behavior because we all get comfortable when, when the regulars are in, everybody lets their hair down. So it's just a super subtle way of saying, this is someone new, pay attention to her. Um, he helped hotels with the, um, the wake up thing that they can flip on their door. And he had a special thing where it's a different color when it's a brand new guest that's never been to the hotel before. So that the person that goes with room service knows to look up their name and call them by their name. So just like it, it's all secret service because it's behind the scenes things that it's not in your face, obvious, but people know they're having a great experience. So it's a great book. I highly recommend it. And to your point, that's going to be what makes us stand out. You know, what is our level of service and not to be that, you know, get them in, get them out, that chain That's salon mentality. My yeah. area, we are a big double, triple, quadruple bookers. We're not going to be allowed to. And it's yeah. not already having that fear. And um, I think it's going to be also a great time for people to build their books for this education would be perfect. Yeah. And, and to your point about the double and triple booking, that is like so many people work with two and three assistants. Like what is Tracy Cunningham going to do? What? What is Tracy Cunningham going to do? She wears one of those big giant hazmat masks. Yeah. She's yeah. Got health issues. And then she runs five assistants. I, I mean, I can't even run my, I had to tell her, sorry. I don't even know what it will look like and when. And I don't know, like the, the big quote that's been floating around is, do we all run, want to run back to what we thought was normal? Right. Right. So. Which for me as a client, I hate going somewhere where they jump from person to person, leave me sitting in between. I hate it. So I, that's why I don't run my book that way. I've always been one client at it. Not always. For the last 15 years, one client at a time, full hour appointment, unless it's something majorly corrective, they get a full hour with me and a full hour with the person that cuts them because we're departmentalized. But it's like so nice when you can actually, if you run a little bit of a he ahead, you can actually sit and have a cup of coffee and visit with your client instead of running to the next person or checking somebody who's overcooking or, you know, there's just, I don't know how people can endure that I for years and years. Anymore. Yeah. My body is tapped and having all this time off. I'm like, I don't want to go back to that. Yeah, good for you. Don't, don't go back to it. The biggest is trying to reinvent myself and re put the business model together for it. But I mean, everyone in my area is going to have to do the same thing. Right. You're not going to be the only one doing it. They're not going to run to the neighbor because they're going to be doing the same thing. So the consumer mindset is going to be so different for the next few months. But I think they'll appreciate not being jammed in between. No, definitely. I think they'll want to be interactive. People are like when I get texting or calling with them, I'm on the phone for an hour. These people haven't had a lot Lonely. of Lonely. Yeah. 
they're so excited to chat with someone different besides who they live with. Yeah, I agree. And then the problem is trying to talk with that mask on. People are saying it's exhausting, that it really that takes a lot to out of you. Turn it around the house to get used to it. Yeah, that's a good idea. And I don't know what our guidelines are going to be, but we've had already the strictest for state to state. So I'm like, oh, it's, I don't know what it's going to be. And I'm hearing to do like only a six hour day for that reason. Mm. And there's going to be a lot of split shifting, a lot of opening seven days. Yeah, it's great. This is the craziest thing I've ever lived through for it's sure. A, it's crazy, but it's going to be a great, it's going to evolve the level of our industry. I hope so. Cause it's been pretty screwed up for a long time. Like it's been very, like you said, like, what am I, where, what am I doing? Who am I working for or with, or what's going on? And it's, it's definitely going to heal a lot of. Going to make it become more. Yeah. Useful. Yeah, for sure. I hope it does. Cause it, California is another breed of how we do our beauty industry. Yeah. I actually, I was very seriously considering moving to Orange County. I looked at a salon I was going to buy. I mean, I was like this close. And then, so, well, somebody pointed out that your um, taxes on your income, it was something like, I, I can't remember the exact percentage, but it was a lot more than I would pay in either Pennsylvania or Florida. So I would have to work twice as hard there to make the same as somewhere else. And the weather's phenomenal, but I was like, I, I mean, I'm 53 years old. I don't want to start fresh and work three times harder into my later years. You know, I should be slowing down, not speeding up. Yeah. And it was in Laguna. So I was talking to waiters in the restaurants and they're like, you know, it's a beach, it's a vacation town. Like you're not going to have people coming all the time and, I, and the rent wasn't going to go away. So I really had to sit with it and, it was the the town was pulling me, but the financial part was just way too scary. So I I give you credit. I, I know it's not easy, and you definitely have to uh, step up everything and do the best you can once you recover from all this. Yeah, we're we're just landlords in California. Our beauty industry. Yeah. Hard. Yeah. Well, thank you for popping on and thank okay. you everyone for listening. Bye. So good to see you too. I hope to see you at our retreat. I hope that life is normal enough to get together again. I'll be there. Good. Can't wait to see you. An excuse to get away and get more education. Exactly. Thank you. I'll see you soon. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye everybody. Thanks for watching.